The moment that unsettled viewers around the world unfolded during a televised interview commemorating the anniversary of Apollo 11, where Buzz Aldrin, the astronaut who became the second human to set foot on the moon, sat beneath bright studio lights, calmly responding to the familiar questions that have followed him for decades, with cameras rolling and producers anticipating a composed reflection on humanity's greatest leap. The setting promised yet another polished retelling of a historic triumph. However, the atmosphere shifted when the reporter asked what the moon meant to him after all those years. When he spoke, his voice was low and uneven as he murmured, The moon is not what you think, a statement that landed heavily in the stillness of the studio. For a man long regarded as a symbol of human achievement, the sudden crack in composure felt profoundly unexpected, and rather than clarifying his remark or dismissing the moment with humor, Aldrin leaned back and looked away, as though weighed down by a memory too vast to articulate. Observers familiar with Aldrin's later interviews have noted that such emotional responses are not uncommon, as his voice often trembles and his eyes well with tears whenever the lunar landing resurfaces in conversation. Journalists revisiting his past appearances have pointed out that his tone shifts each time the moon becomes the subject, alternating between pride and unease, as though the experience carries a burden he has never fully disclosed. During a 2019 interview, his voice cracked while describing the profound silence of the lunar surface, and former colleagues have remarked that even in private conversations, he would sometimes trail off mid-sentence when recalling the sight of Earth from space, seemingly searching for words that remained just out of reach. Those closest to him often speak of two distinct sides of Buzz Aldrin, as the public figure remains disciplined, optimistic, and unwavering in his support of future space missions, while the private man is more reserved and contemplative, as though a part of him never entirely returned from the moon. To understand the weight behind that trembling voice, the story must return to its origin, to the mission that carried him farther than any human had ever gone. When Buzz Aldrin stepped down from the ladder of the lunar module, the scene before him challenged everything he had expected based on life on Earth. Instead of a breathtaking sight, he faced a wide stretch of emptiness, with gray dust covering the ground and no sound, air or motion anywhere around him. The horizon seemed strangely close, giving the uneasy feeling of standing inside a massive bowl rather than on the surface of a distant world, while the silence felt heavier than anything he had ever experienced. The moon did not match the beauty people had imagined for generations, showing instead a rough and colorless surface that felt old and unfamiliar. Fine dust stuck to Aldrin's boots, leaving clear footprints that would remain untouched for hundreds of years, as each step lifted particles that dropped straight back down with no wind to carry them. Mission notes recorded Aldrin commenting on the unusual feel of the soil and the sharp harsh shadows created by sunlight with no atmosphere to soften it. Above him the sky was not blue, and held no visible stars, only a deep black that seemed endless. When Neil Armstrong joined him on the surface, they worked slowly and carefully to set up tools and take photographs, while their voices echoed back through the radio in a hollow tone. The moon felt less like a planet and more like a place outside the normal flow of creation, an idea Aldrin later summed up with the words magnificent desolation. The phrase captured both the scale and the deep loneliness of the moment, as he stood on land untouched by life and unchanged for billions of years. When Aldrin looked up and saw Earth hanging in the dark sky glowing blue and white, its weakness became clear. From that distance all borders and conflicts disappeared, leaving only a small and fragile sphere. In later years Aldrin explained that this view changed how he thought about exploration, showing that it was not only about success or discovery, but also about understanding how small and temporary humanity truly is. Although the mission was celebrated as a great victory, the silence of the moon stayed with Aldrin long after he returned home. The moon often seen as beautiful and mysterious from Earth revealed itself to be harsh, empty, and strangely sacred. In that deep stillness surrounded by blinding light and endless shadow, Aldrin felt both the weight of human history and a powerful connection between humanity and the universe. Enjoyed what you just watched? Drop a like, and if you're on mobile, give it an extra boost with hype. When the Apollo 11 crew returned to Earth, they were welcomed as heroes. With parades stretching through New York and Chicago, as flags waved, crowds cheered, and television cameras recorded every moment. Buzz Aldrin smiled and waved from an open car, his silver astronaut suit shining under the summer sun, offering the world a clear image of pride and success. Behind that public celebration, however, his thoughts remained tied to the silent landscape he had left behind, 
as the noise of applause could not replace the emptiness of the moon. In the weeks that followed, Aldrin took part in the ceremonies expected of a national hero, meeting presidents, giving speeches, receiving medals, and greeting scientists, military leaders, and children inspired by spaceflight. People close to him later said that something essential had changed. His interview responses became shorter, and at social events, he often withdrew into quiet corners, lost in thought. Friends recalled finding him awake late at night, reflecting alone, while colleagues noticed that even in professional settings, he sometimes seemed distant, attentive on the surface, but mentally elsewhere. Compared with Armstrong and Collins, who handled public attention with confidence, Aldrin appeared restless and unsettled. Those who knew him best believed he was affected less by what he had seen than by what he had realized. The moon had stripped existence down to its most basic elements, and returning to daily routines made ordinary life feel unreal. Fame intensified that feeling, as people repeatedly asked him to describe the moon, while he struggled to explain an experience defined by silence and distance beyond words. To the public, the moon symbolized triumph, but for Aldrin it became a reminder of humanity's small place in the universe. He once said that returning to grocery stores and traffic lights felt disorienting after confronting infinity. Although the mission was celebrated worldwide, he found it difficult to fully return to normal life. In the years that followed, he faced depression and a persistent sense of loss, as though the mission had ended but the silence remained. In later interviews, Aldrin admitted that the moon never truly left him, remaining somewhere behind his eyes. During the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 in 2019, cameras captured him pausing when asked which moment stood out most. His eyes filled with tears as he answered, the silence. He explained that it was overwhelming rather than peaceful, revealing how fragile human life truly is. While history remembers the landing as a triumph of science and courage, for those who stood on the moon, it was also deeply unsettling. Aldrin later said that his tears came not from fear, but from understanding, shaped by the paradox of isolation and connection that permanently changed how he viewed the universe. When asked in a 2024 People magazine interview what the moon truly meant to him, he offered a faint smile and explained that it was not merely rock and dust, but a source of reflection, where looking outward ultimately revealed oneself. The psychological effects of space travel, especially lunar missions, have been widely examined in recent decades. Researchers describe a phenomenon known as the overview effect, a shift in awareness experienced by astronauts who see Earth from space, marked by awe and a heightened sense of connection to all life. For Aldrin, this effect was intensified by the extreme isolation of the lunar surface, where Earth appeared not as a detailed world, but as a distant and vulnerable sphere. Psychologists studying his interviews have noted signs of what could be described as cosmic loneliness, an awareness of humanity's isolation within the vast universe. A psychiatry professor who specializes in the mental effects of spaceflight has explained that astronauts often experience delayed emotional responses to their missions. While the immediate aftermath is filled with celebration and analysis, the deeper emotional impact can emerge months or even years later. In some cases, including Aldrin's, this delayed response contributes to depression and a sense of disconnection from everyday life. Aldrin has spoken openly about these struggles in his autobiography and interviews, discussing his battles with alcoholism and depression following Apollo 11. He described feeling unmoored, as though the greatest achievement of his life had come too early, leaving nothing of equal magnitude to pursue. The moon, once a goal, became a constant presence in his thoughts. What makes Aldrin's experience especially striking is the contrast between public image and private reality. To the world, he represented triumph and human progress, yet privately, he wrestled with unresolved questions about humanity's place in the universe and the meaning of exploration. These questions, philosophical rather than technical, could not be solved through engineering or science, and the inward journey they required proved more challenging than the journey to the moon itself. In later years, Aldrin found purpose by turning his experiences toward education and advocacy, becoming a strong supporter of future missions to Mars and humanity's expansion beyond Earth. Even in these forward-looking efforts, he emphasized the psychological and philosophical dimensions of exploration. In a 2018 interview, he explained that traveling to another world brings back more than data and samples. It permanently alters perspective, changing how Earth and human life are understood. More than five decades after Apollo 11, scientists turned their attention back to the moon, not through crewed missions, but through advanced computers, satellites, and artificial intelligence. 
vast collections of Apollo-era measurements, photographs, and rock samples were re-examined using powerful new software, and the results challenged long-standing assumptions about the Moon's nature. Unexpectedly, these findings echoed what Buzz Aldrin sensed when he first stood on its gray surface. One of the earliest surprises emerged from instruments left behind by Apollo astronauts. During the 1970s, seismometers recorded small moonquakes caused by meteoroid impacts, yet when researchers revisited this data years later, they noticed that the vibrations behaved unlike anything on Earth. Instead of fading quickly, they reverberated for nearly an hour, leading NASA engineers to describe the moon as ringing like a bell. This unusual response suggested that the lunar interior is structured very differently from Earth's, possibly layered in a way that carries vibrations more efficiently, or even partially hollow, revealing a complexity no one had anticipated. Another major discovery strengthened the connection between Earth and its natural satellite. Using advanced isotope analysis, scientists compared lunar rock samples with material from deep within Earth and found an almost perfect chemical match. This evidence showed that the Moon was not captured from elsewhere in space, but formed from Earth itself after a massive collision billions of years ago sent debris into orbit. Rather than being a distant companion, the Moon is a direct product of our planet's violent early history. As technology progressed, robotic missions began probing the lunar surface once again. Instruments aboard India's Chandrayaan-3 lander and NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter scanned beneath the soil using radar and spectrometers, uncovering tiny glass beads created by ancient volcanic eruptions. Trapped within these beads were traces of water preserved for billions of years, suggesting that the moon's interior once held, and may still hold, chemical energy from a more active past. In 2023, Artificial intelligence opened yet another window into the moon's history by reanalyzing Apollo data. Algorithms detected faint magnetic patterns in lunar rocks, confirming that the moon once possessed a molten core capable of generating its own magnetic field. Radar scans of the far side also revealed massive buried metal structures, possibly remnants of ancient asteroid impacts that occurred long before life appeared on Earth. Together, these discoveries have transformed the way the moon is understood. It is not a lifeless rock drifting through space, but a dynamic remnant of Earth's own formation, carrying a shared history written in stone. Long before modern tools revealed these truths, Buzz Aldrin seemed to sense them when he said, The moon is not what you think. His words were not a mystery, but an early recognition of a reality that science is only now beginning to fully grasp. The moon is not separate from humanity's story, but an enduring part of it. For Aldrin, the moon served as a mirror for the human spirit, while for artificial intelligence, it exists as an immense and complex dataset. Yet both approaches are ultimately searching for meaning. The Apollo missions returned photographs and physical samples, but modern scientists now possess tools that allow them to detect what could not be seen before. These systems identify mineral compositions, analyze shadowed regions for signs of water ice, and reconstruct crater formations that date back millions of years. What once appeared as lifeless gray terrain is now revealed as a surface filled with information. Even so, modern exploration continues to trace Aldrin's path. When artificial intelligence reconstructs the Sea of Tranquility, it maps the same ground where Aldrin and Armstrong once walked, creating a convergence between human experience and machine analysis. Aldrin once observed that exploration never truly ends, but changes form, a reflection that now feels increasingly relevant. The integration of artificial intelligence into lunar research marks a new chapter in humanity's relationship with the moon. These systems identify patterns, simulate scenarios, and uncover connections that human observers might overlook, while also deepening understanding of the moon's influence on Earth, from stabilizing axial tilt to shaping ocean tides. Despite this technological power, artificial intelligence cannot replace the human element that Aldrin represents. Machines can measure and calculate, but they cannot experience wonder or feel the emotional weight of standing on another world and looking back at Earth. They cannot respond to the beauty and indifference of the cosmos with emotion. That is why Aldrin's reaction remains so meaningful. In an age driven by data and algorithms, his response reminds us that exploration is ultimately a human endeavor. Facts and measurements matter, but so do the inner transformations that occur when a person confronts the vastness of existence. Scientifically, the moon is more complex and more connected to Earth than once assumed. Psychologically, 
the experience of being there is deeper and more challenging than celebratory narratives suggest. Philosophically, the moon reflects humanity's nature and raises enduring questions about identity and purpose. Modern science, strengthened by artificial intelligence, is now confirming what Aldrin sensed intuitively. The moon is not a lifeless rock, but a living archive of cosmic history, a piece of earth shaped by time and collision, and a place that transforms those who encounter it. As humanity prepares to return through programs like Artemis, future explorers will carry advanced technology alongside the same questions Aldrin faced. What it means to leave Earth, what is learned when standing on another world, and how that knowledge is carried home remain questions without technical answers. The moon endures as a teacher and a mirror, revealing both the vastness of the universe and humanity's fragile place within it. Aldrin's tears reflected recognition rather than regret, an emotional response to a truth too large for simple explanation. As a new era of exploration approaches, Aldrin's lesson remains essential. Technology may enable the journey, but meaning is found in what is discovered about ourselves along the way. The moon waits in silence, ready to teach future generations what it once taught Buzz Aldrin, that humanity is small yet significant, alone yet connected, mortal yet part of something enduring. What Buzz Aldrin truly encountered on the moon, and why that experience remained with him for decades, can be understood not through conspiracy or mystery, but through the profound moment when human consciousness confronted cosmic reality. Standing on an ancient surface and looking back at Earth, he underwent a shift in awareness that permanently reshaped his understanding of existence. Modern science is now revealing that this intuition was well-founded, showing that the moon is far more than a distant object in space. It stands as a mirror reflecting humanity's nature, a teacher revealing perspective, and a fragment of ourselves suspended within the vastness of the universe. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss our upcoming journeys. Thanks for watching and see you next time.